Questions are still swirling tonight about what exactly happened the moments before a young black woman fell to her death from her High Park apartment yesterday. The province's police watchdog is now investigating as the family demands answers about how a call for help ended with such a horrific ending. I asked the police yesterday if they could take my daughter to Camp H and my daughter ended up dead. So I don't understand. A heartbroken family desperate for answers after 29-year-old Regis Korczynski Paquette ended up dead on the lawn of her High Park apartment Wednesday. We need to find justice for her. She means so much to me. I love you, Regis. I love you, and I'll never stop fighting for you. I promise you. Police were called to the 24th floor around 5 p.m. by Regis's mother, who says her daughter was experiencing a mental health crisis after an epileptic seizure. They say Regis exchanged words with officers in the hallway, then entered the apartment saying she had to use the bathroom. Police followed, barring her brother and mother from entering. After approximately one to two minutes, the mother and the brother heard commotion in the apartment and then heard Regis cry out, Mom, help. Mom, help. Mom, help. After that, mother and brother heard silence. We were like standing here looking like this. And she literally flew by us. Building residents left reeling from the horrific turn of events. One man telling City News he'd come out to his balcony after hearing the commotion of about six police cruisers arriving. Ten minutes later, he witnessed a woman falling to her death. I'm freaked out. I couldn't even go to work today. Nothing. But what exactly happened in the moments before Regis's death still remains unclear. The Special Investigations Unit has now taken over. They're called in any time a civilian is seriously injured or killed during an interaction with police. The police killed my daughter, came in my apartment and shoved her off the balcony. Those were the allegations being made by Regis's mother hours after the incident Wednesday. Today, the family stopped short of repeating them, but say they find it hard to believe Regis would have jumped. I can tell you this. Regis has been calling the building for weeks in an attempt to get a screen put on her balcony, as her neighbor has a screen. She's had very strong concerns about the safety. It's the way they went into it, the, how aggressively they went in there after, after a girl that is... 100 it, pounds. It's 100 pounds. It's the way that they went in there. Regis's brother calling out Toronto Police's aggressive handling of the situation, saying there were at least five officers on scene. Their family lawyer pointing out this is not the first time police have failed to deal with mental health calls appropriately. If we see statistically, there is a higher proportion of violence against people of color. When you intersect mental health and color, then you get an even higher percentage. Case in point, the shooting death of Andrew Loku in 2015, a black man with mental health issues killed by Toronto police. A 2017 coroner's inquest recommended the force expand its crisis services, review use of force training, and focus on de-escalation. Those officers were never charged. In a press conference today, Police Chief Mark Saunders said while he legally can't comment on SIU investigations, he does believe there will be transparency and accountability, urging the public to wait for the SIU's report. I'm awaiting all of the evidence, the fingerprints, the statements, any type of DNA uh, to tell the story to tell the truth and uh, I support my men and women uh, based on the limited information that I have right now. Singh says he hopes this investigation won't go the same way Andrew Lokus did. One thing that I would like to ensure is that the SIU retrieves all the cameras from the building because we know in the Andrew Loku situation the precise moment of Andrew Loku being shot was not available on the video somehow deleted. Now, Regis's family describes her as a talented gymnast and a volunteer at her church. They say she only began experiencing seizures within the last five years. She leaves behind four siblings and 12 nieces and nephews.